Today I'll be reading from 1 Kings chapter 12, verses 16 through 17. I'll be reading from the New... When all Israel saw the king refused to listen to them, they answered the king, What shall do we have in David? What part in Jesse's son to your tents, Israel? Look after your house, David. To the Israelites went home, but as for the Israelites who were living in the town of Judah, or Rehoboam still ruled over them. You know, we continue tonight in our walking uh, through God's Word series, and we've reached the divided kingdom. And it really encompasses a large portion of the events that take place in the Old Testament text. And yet I think that, for the most part, with just a few names uh, to the exception, such as Ahab and Jezebel and Elijah and Elisha, I think most know very little about that. I think we spend very little time. A few years back I was blessed to teach a, a class that that really delved into the divided kingdom and and found that it is just filled with teachings and uh, examples uh, that we can live by and how we are to relate to God and how God feels about the things that we do or do not do. You can almost find an example about everything. Uh, within the kings and the peoples that lived in this time of the divided kingdom of, of Israel. Last week we reached the end of Solomon's life and the end of the, at that point of the United Kingdom and we know that God divided the kingdom. He gave ten tribes to Jeroboam because of the paganism of Solomon and the things that he had done. And as good as he began, he ended in a very poor manner. So the kingdom divided. The text that was read just a moment ago was Rehoboam's chance. He had a chance to roll back some of the oppressive policies of Solomon that had been placed upon the people, and yet he wanted to be better than his father as he saw it. He wanted to show himself to be more powerful, and so not only did he leave those policies in place, but made it clear that he would make them worse. And so the ten tribes of the north said, well, you can just stay here. We're going home. You can rule the house of David, but we're not going to follow you. So the ten tribes of the north became their own nation under Jeroboam, as God had prophesied to Jeroboam while Solomon was still alive. And the southern kingdom of Judah, which would comprise, be comprised of Judah and Benjamin, basically those two tribes combined together uh, to basically just be the tribe of Judah. Both kingdoms... As you go through the text, we'll have 19 kings. Judah will have one additional person. She's not really considered a queen. Uh, she would have called herself that, but Jezebel's daughter, Athaliah, ruled for a time in Judah, so they called her the usurper. So 19 kings for the southern kingdom and one usurper in Athaliah. All northern kings were evil. There was never a good king in the northern kingdom. When we look at the southern kingdom, we see that there were good kings and there were bad kings, and, and they pretty much landed everywhere on the spectrum from really bad to, you know, start good, end bad, kind of like Solomon, and some that were good all throughout. And some of the best that there ever was were found in the southern kingdom. Northern kingdom has nine different dynastic families that rule over it. There are times when entire families of kings are wiped out in the northern kingdom, and yet there is only one dynastic family in the southern kingdom. And that is the house of David. And that was preserved 
by God. Even though Athaliah tries to destroy it, it was preserved by God to ensure that Jesus would come by the line of David. Judah will last, the southern kingdom will last 344 years. And the northern kingdom will last 130 years shorter than that. And so the good kings did keep Judah around a little bit longer than the uh, all evil kings of the northern kingdom. The northern kingdom will be destroyed by Assyria. They will be all but wiped out. And their peoples transported to other places out of the land of Canaan. The, north, the southern kingdom will be taken into captivity, that remnant that God said that he would preserve of Judah for Jesus to come through would be taken into Babylonian captivity and then eventually returned to the land. I want us to look at the kings, and, and this is just the first. It's going to take a few lessons for us to get to the divided kingdom, but uh, we're going to, tonight, I just want us to look at the first few kings and uh, see some of the things about them, and then next week we will look at ones that we know well, Ahab. Jezebel, Elijah and Elisha, and all that goes on in the, that time frame. There is a great deal of, of text in regard to those individuals. First king of the southern kingdom is, of course, Rehoboam. He is the son of Solomon. He is an evil king. He does not rule good. He follows in the path of footsteps of his own father. And he divided the kingdom by foolishly trying to show himself as greater than his own father. He refused to give. He refused to listen to the older men. There were the older wise men, the wise men of his father, that counseled him wisely on what to do in this situation. And he refused the counsel of the older wise men and listened to his younger buddies, for lack of a better term. They wanted a piece of the pie. And if they gave up all the taxes and the things that Solomon had placed upon the people, then they wouldn't get that. So they wanted more, and it cost them the kingdom. King Jeroboam was the first king of the southern or the northern, of the northern kingdom rather and he too was evil even though God chose him God gave him the northern kingdom the prophet came and he tore off 10 pieces of the cloth of the, of the cloth and said these are yours and yet he would take those pieces and walk away from God he would take those tribes that God had given to him and he would turn them against God and his actions as we discussed a few weeks ago on Sunday morning were actions that led to their destruction. He builds calves, golden calves, and Dan and Bethel for the people to worship so that they will not return to Jerusalem. I love one of the stories that is told in regard to Jeroboam right out of the gate. God sends a young prophet. You know, there, there are a lot of prophets in the Bible that never even get named, right? And this is one of them, a young, nameless prophet that God sends to Jeroboam. He wants him to go to Bethel. He wants him to uh, condemn the altar. And he does what God says, and he goes there, and Jeroboam's there, and he, he, he condemns the altar that he has built to that golden calf, and Jeroboam reaches out with his arm to have him taken, and his arm shrivels up and won't work anymore. God then, or the prophet then prays on behalf of Jeroboam and his arm is restored. And the altar, just as the prophet says, breaks in two and the ashes spill out as God condemns what Jeroboam is doing. And he also makes it clear to them that in, years in the future, King Josiah, 300 years later, will destroy that location and he will burn the bones of the priest that offered the sacrifices there. This is all told to Jeroboam at this time and fulfilled much later. He actually calls Josiah by name 300 years before he was even king. 19 times. 19 times in that narrative of that young nameless prophet, he is referred to as a man of God. The man of God. And he is commanded that when he goes there and he does what he is supposed to do with Jeroboam, he is then to leave the land. He is to go back in a, in a way in which he did not come. And he's not to eat or drink anything while in the, land, in the northern kingdom. But there's an older prophet there of God. Why he's there, we're not real certain why he didn't leave with some of the others. A lot of the Levites have already left by this point. But 
there's a prophet there. And he, I guess, you know, for lack of a better understanding, he seems to be lonely for, him, for another prophet. And he tells a lie. He goes to this young nameless prophet and he says, God told me to come and get you and to, you to come to my house and eat. And then that young prophet listened to him. And he went to his house and while they were eating, God gave a message to the older prophet telling the younger prophet he had disobeyed. He began his journey home riding his donkey and a lion jumped out knocked him off of his donkey and killed him. And the donkey sat on one side of him and the lion sat on the other side of him and the lion didn't need him. He just killed him. And everybody that went past and saw this sight of this lion and this donkey sitting there with his body in between them knew that it was something from God and that word got back to the old prophet. He mourned what had happened. And he buried that young prophet there in the land. You know, when we think about that story, and it's a very interesting story, it's one thing that we see in this story is that God wants you to do what He says. And even if we're lied to, you know, there's people out there in the religious world today that are being lied to day in and day out, and I feel sorry for them. I do, that they're believing a lie. But it won't save them just because they're being deceived. This young prophet was deceived. He was deceived even by a man that was a prophet. And he paid the price because he didn't do it what God told him to do. He listened to someone else. Folks, we need to make certain that whatever someone is saying to us religiously, that we look first and foremost to what God has said. And if someone says something different than this, they say, uh-uh. I don't care if you claim to have an angel come to you, right? Paul said, if an angel tells you anything other than what I've said, let him be accursed. We need to have that same attitude. All the past good and the service done by that young prophet meant little when he disobeyed God. Well, in Judah, we see that King Abijah becomes king, and he is an evil king. He is the son of Rehoboam. And he reigns for only two years. Uh, and then he is replaced by King Asa in Judah. And King Asa is the first good king that we're going to see since David. And King Asa will reign in the southern kingdom for 41 years. In fact, tonight, all the rest of the kings that we will discuss will all be northern kingdom kings that will reign while Asa is reigning in Judah for those 41 years. He defeated a million Ethiopians because of his faith in God. He was a man who dedicated himself to religious reforms. He did, late in his life, disappoint God. He disappointed God whenever he chose, he chose to make an alliance with Syria rather than trusting God. God was never pleased with the nation of Israel, whether it was the northern kingdom or the southern kingdom, he was never pleased with them when they felt like they had to make an alliance with another nation to protect themselves. God always wanted them to have faith in him to protect them. And Asa disappointed God in that action. In Israel, the northern kingdom, King Nadab reigned, and he was evil. He reigned for only one year. He was assassinated by a name, man named, named Basha. Basha became king, and he was evil, and he reigned for 23 years. And at the beginning of his reign, he found every member of the family of Jeroboam, and he slaughtered them. No one was left of the house of Jeroboam. And that was the first of the dynastic kingdom uh, line that would be destroyed by the ones that followed. See, that's really when we look back to David and, and we see that David is always the one listed whenever there's a good king, that that king walked in the steps of David. What we see in that northern kingdom is exactly what David refused to be. He had those chances to kill Saul, right? Already anointed king, who am I to kill the Lord's anointed? Had the chance to wipe out Saul's rest of his family by killing Meshabosheth, which was the son of Jonathan, but he didn't, but instead he put him at his table to eat. David refused to be like the other kings 
in the, in the world at that time. King Elah followed Basha. He was evil, and he reigned for only one year. He was assassinated while drunk uh, by a man named Zimri. Zimri took the throne, only managed to reign seven days. Remember I told you that we're going to have a whole bunch of kings? All the time, the ace is king for 41 years. These guys are making it one year, one year, two years, seven days in this particular case. Zimri reigns for seven days. And he destroyed, in those seven days, he found and destroyed all of Basha's family, wiping out yet another dynastic family group. He committed suicide at the end of those seven days. When the palace that he was in was surrounded, he burned it down upon himself. There in Israel at that time, King Omri took, became king. King Omri is going to reign for 11 years. He too, as being a northern kingdom, I... It's almost redundant for me to say it, right? He's evil. <laughs> They're all evil. And he is the father of Ahab. But as king, he makes the northern kingdom much stronger. He is a man that is very strong. He's a man that is very strong militarily. He makes Samaria the capital of Israel. And it will remain the capital of Israel, uh, the northern kingdom, from this point forward. Like I told you at the beginning of the lesson, I don't want to get into tonight Ahab and Jezebel and Elijah and Elisha. I think that's all in a lesson by itself next week, but we're at that point. King Omri has this son named Ahab. And he's going to marry a woman who's not a Jew. He's going to marry Jezebel. She is from Sidon. She's going to bring all her pagan idols with her. And she is going to cause great pain and suffering not only on the house of Ahab, but also upon the house, all of the nation of Israel. We'll look at that next week. All these kings reigned in Israel during the single reign of Asa, who was the good king, that, the first good king we have in this divided kingdom. At about the same time that Ahab does become king, though, King Asa's son, Jehoshaphat, began to rule in Judah. And we're going to see those two families become entwined with each other. That's how we're going to get Athaliah as queen over the southern kingdom at a at point in the future. And we will talk about those things next week. You know, I think tonight, I think when we look at the kings and we look at the young prophet that we talked about earlier, the thing we have to think about in our own lives is it doesn't matter what I did yesterday. It doesn't matter how faithful I've been the last 20 years. It only matters what I do today. It only matters the obedience that I give to God at this moment. The obedience that I give to God tomorrow and the day after that. Because you can start good and you can do good just like that young prophet did and you can blow it the moment that you don't listen to God. You live it your own way. And there is a price to pay. I hope that's not the case for any of us. I hope none of us are trying to live our Christianity in the past because Christianity is a present tense religion. It's what we do right now. Are you living tonight? Are you living at this moment in the manner in which God has commanded? If you are not, make that right. If we can help you do that this evening, we want to do so as we stand as we sing. Let's rise up and build.